Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install TensorFlow 2.5, QD 11.2, QDNN 8.1 with the full support for an NVIDIA RTX 30 series uh, GPU. And since CUDA is backwards compatible, whatever I'm doing here should also work in any NVIDIA GPU, including the RTX 20 series. But before I install CUDA, I will do some benchmarking of TensorFlow without a GPU. I'll be training an image classification model that I have developed in a previous uh, episode with my AMD Ryzen 5900X CPU. The AMD Ryzen 5900X CPU has 12 cores and 24 threads, and it's a great CPU all around, perfect for someone who wants to dip their toes into deep learning. Once I complete the CUDA setup, I will try to complete the training of the same model with my NVIDIA RTX 3070 GPU, which has 5,888 CUDA cores. And I'm expecting, of course, to beat my AMD Ryzen 5900X CPU by a big margin because GPUs are just faster than CPUs when handling lots of matrix calculations. But I'm going to be open-minded. You never know. One of the reasons I'm a bit open-minded is that uh, I saw on GitHub uh, an open issue regarding the RTX 3090 being slower than the NVIDIA GTX 1080i for predictions, uh, in this case, with ResNet. This might be because of TensorFlow itself, uh, which is still uh, implementing CUDA 11.2 and not yet taking full advantage of the Ampere architecture. But of course, uh, this is just uh, a result between GPUs. Uh, in general, a GPU is going to always be a lot faster than a CPU. If not, there must be something wrong. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. Before we uh, try to install TensorFlow, uh, let's uh, first install Anaconda. Anaconda is a, a toolkit that uh, includes Python and libraries that are the favorite uh, for most uh, data science, machine learning, web scraping projects on the web. And it already includes JupyterLab, which is um, my favorite web-based IDE. And it's very useful for uh, general development of uh, notebooks for uh, TensorFlow and uh, anything to do with Python. With uh, Anaconda, we also can run different versions of Python in isolated environments, which only contain the Python libraries and versions that we need. While still having access to pip, we also have access to the Conda package manager, which allows us to install uh, pre-compiled libraries for Python. Contrast that to pip, which uh, if you use pip, instead of, uh, of using the compiled binary of a library, it needs to compile it from source during installation, which takes a, a lot longer and it, it can fail, uh, especially if you don't have all the dependencies in it. Before starting, it's a good idea to update to the most recent version of the NVIDIA game ready driver. In this case, I already have one of the most recent uh, versions, and so I'm not going to update it. I had to update my drivers recently because I enabled the resizable bar support. And as you can see here, I have this switched on, which is quite cool, at least for games, not for, for, not for deep learning, but it's there. So now let's start Anaconda. Let's create a new environment, 2.5, TensorFlow 2.5. So in this environment, I'll be able to install the libraries I need for TensorFlow and for anything else. It's good to have an environment because then we can reduce the chances of having dependencies, uh, issues with dependencies between libraries with different versions. And uh, with TensorFlow, normally you have a little bit of uh, that issue because there's, there's a lot of libraries that it requires. So let's now open a command prompt in administrator mode and we can do conda activate TensorFlow 2.5. And I'm going to install a TensorFlow 2.5, but for now, uh, at the time of writing, uh, Yoni can use the release candidate that still not, hasn't been released for general availability but you can already use the release candidate, which works with QDA 11.2.1. You can see the latest uh, available version is 2.4.1, but if you go into the release history, you can see that there is 2.5.0 release candidate one. So I'm going to use this version. If you are more adventurous, you can even use uh, TensorFlow 2.6 from the nightly build, but that's probably not a very wise thing to do. Okay, so let's install 
TensorFlow 2.5. Okay, it's now installed. I will install some extra libraries um, because I know that I need them. I will install, by the way, normally you will install packages using the Conda package manager, but in this case, because TensorFlow 2.5 is not yet available uh, in uh, Conda itself, then I, that's why I had to use pip. So now that uh, I need to install matplotlib, I'm going to actually use Conda for that because it's much easier. The advantage of using Conda instead of pip is mainly to do with compilation. So uh, all the packages that you get in Anaconda, they are already uh, pre-compiled and you don't have to uh, worry about having issues uh, compiling code. Now I'm going to install Pandas as well. Okay, so it's all done. Now that I've installed the libraries that we need, let's start uh, JupyterLab. I need to install it first though. It's quite handy to do it like this. So you just have to click install and it will do it for you. That's why many people like Anaconda. Gets you up and running very quickly rather than having to install everything uh, with pip by hand. Okay, so let's click launch. So I have a notebook here which I created in a previous episode. And this notebook actually trains an image classification model to basically to check if uh, a painting is of the nativity uh, or not. So you can check it out the videos. I'll put that into the description if you're curious how I got to this model. So I'm just going to make sure I clear all the outputs first. So we're going to run this notebook using the CPU only, right? So I haven't uh, installed CUDA yet, so I'm going to be only relying on the CPU itself. So I'm just going to start it now. And here there is some code that tells me if that what TensorFlow version I have, whether a GPU is available or not. So I can see here version 2.5.0, the release candidate one. By the time you watch this video, TensorFlow might already have the actual official 2.5.0 version, but until then you will need to use uh, the release candidate if you want to use uh, CUDA 11.2.1. And okay, you can see GPU is now available. So let's run, keep running the notebook. So this notebook actually downloads files from a data set that I've gathered about art containing nativity scenes. But because I've already downloaded the files beforehand, I'm going to skip the steps here. I don't need resizing images because I already have everything in place. Don't run this as well. So we start basically here. So at this stage, we can see how many images we have in our data set. 452 for the nativity. I think it's total actually. Some pictures from the nativity just to check everything looks good. And then another data set we have, which is not nativity. Uh, I know it looks very similar, but it's, this is uh, not a nativity uh, painting. Although it looks like it. Now we're just going to run the notebook and do the training with the CPU and see how the AMD Ryzen 5900 does with training without a GPU. It's probably going to scream a bit. Not yet, I haven't started the training yet. So we're creating the model and then this is the first place where we're going to do some training for 10 epochs and see how fast this goes. Okay, it's finished, the first training. So accuracy on the test data set is 67, 0.67. It's not bad. Okay, now 25 epochs and see, see how long it takes. So the training completed, it's not too bad. Now we're going to do transfer learning. Okay, so 25 epochs with transfer learning. This is a much bigger model and it's going to take a bit longer. Okay, it has completed the training. And uh, let's just check. So the training looks good actually. So the, the loss goes down, which is what we want to see on the validation. On the training that said, it always happens that it goes down because a neural network is very, uh, is very good for, for fitting against the data in which it's trained. So let me just see if I can gather some more information. 
we can see that for transfer learning it took like between uh, 11 and 13 seconds per epoch to train each uh, step. In the previous models, without using transfer learning, uh, this is uh, training a model from scratch. It takes 161 milliseconds per step, which is quite good. And this one takes about 157 milliseconds. So we can see that because we are using a bigger model, it takes a lot longer. In this case, we're using the exception architecture, which is trained on ImageNet. Okay, we can see how long it takes to do uh, fine tuning. Okay, so it took two seconds per step for fine tuning and then 47 seconds per epoch compared to 11 seconds per epoch here. Okay, this is just to check how good the predictions are. Predicted is P, ground truth is GT, in this case it's native and nativity, it seems to match. Match is good, good. No, this one is bad. So in total it has a 72% accuracy. Okay, it's finished. I'm done the testing. Trained the, this custom image classification model without a GPU. And now let's uh, go through the setup of uh, CUDA and see how much uh, improvements we can get after we get CUDA uh, working. Which should be a bit of an effort to be honest. Let's do that. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to download CUDA. Make sure you download the version 11.2.1. Don't download the version 11.3 or any earlier version because it will not work. So I'm, I'm installing this on Windows 10 and 2.8 gigabytes. So it will take a bit of time. Right, so it finished downloading CUDA. So I'm going to uh, install it now. All right, so CUDA is now installed. Next is to, we should install QDNN. So I'm going to download QDNN 8.1. So for that, we need to log in. Uh, you need to have a developer account. I already have one. So this is the version I need to download. The first one for CUDA 11.2 Windows version in my case. Now we have to unzip this uh, directory. So now we need to copy certain files. And this is where it gets a bit tricky. We have to do this by hand. So I'm going to open the CUDA, the CUDA folder, which um, is going to be inside program files and NVIDIA corporation. No, not this one, sorry. It's going to be inside NVIDIA GPU computing toolkit, CUDA 11.2. Okay, so we have now to copy. So I'm following these instructions here. So first unzip. Which I've already done. And I already have two folders, one for with CUDA and the other with QDNN. Now this one is Q CUDA DNN. So I need to copy from this folder to the CUDA folder. So first one I need to copy is all the files inside bin with this name QDNN DLL. So let's do that. So all of them are QDN and DLL. And we're going to copy that to CUDA version number bin here. So these files here, because I didn't do for all of them. So now I have the files in the right place. So the second step is to copy the header files for inside the include directory qdnn.h so all the files in here actually and then I should copy that to to the encode folder so I should copy the files here it says it has to replace files well I'll assume it has it okay I'll replace the files it needs administrator permission okay and now the last uh, step is to copy the QDNN uh, lib so I need to go inside the lib directory x64 then I need to copy all these files into the equivalent folder inside CUDA and I'll replace all the files 
Okay, it's all done. So the next step is uh, we need to set up some environment variables. So the instructions tell me to start this process, the system properties. So I can go to advanced, advanced environment variables. There are already some variables set up here. So we need to add CUDA path. Oops, made a mistake. So I need to make sure it's a valid path. So 11.2. So it's all good. So I have set up all the environment variables. Now let's go back to TensorFlow and see if we... I don't think I need to run this step here. I'm going to just leave it out for now. I think that might be if, if you're trying to do some development with this library itself and if you want to compile TensorFlow or something like that. But that's not the case for me. So let's go back to TensorFlow. Okay, let's see if we can detect my GPU now. Remember before it, it said there's no GPU available. Let's see what it says now. I need to restart the kernel just in case. You can see now it's able to detect the GPU, which is good. Okay, so that's very good. Now I'm going to run again this notebook and see how, how much faster the training is compared to before. I need to start the, from the right step. So I should start from here. So here I'm compiling the module. Now I'm going to run the model. See, before it took 157 milliseconds. I'm using the GPU at the moment for recording this. So I might have to switch it off. I'm just going to try and see what happens if I don't do that. Okay, it still works. As you can see, it's a lot faster. Before it was doing in milliseconds, now it's doing almost like in zero seconds. So 11 milliseconds per step. Okay, but this is not a lot of data, so it doesn't take very long. And the model is very small, but it's considerably faster uh, than uh, my AMD Ryzen 5900. Okay, now it's the second attempt at training. It's very fast. Okay, let's do the transfer learning. This is the one where it's supposed to take a bit longer. So it's taking f one second per step and sorry, one second per epoch. And before it was taking 11 seconds. And uh, notice there is a, the first epoch takes a bit longer because this is a, a startup time for TensorFlow. This is actually a known issue. It takes a bit of time. So very quick, much quicker than my CPU, as you would expect. Look at this, this is like sweet spot of, this is what you want to see in terms of validation loss going down a conjunction with the training loss. So here we are running again the training with fine tuning. I am using uh, the GPU as well for recording my voice because I'm using RTX broadcast. So I th think this is actually going to be quicker if I, if I don't run this application at the same time as I, I run the training. But you know, you can see it's actually reasonably fast. No, so before it was taking 44 seconds per epoch. Now it's taking nine seconds for the first one and then five seconds for the, the next one. So it's much faster as you would expect. And that's about it. So I've uh, installed TensorFlow 2.5, which supports CUDA 11.2. I've installed CUDA. And uh, at the same time, I even showed you uh, why you want to have a GPU rather than just relying on a CPU. Even though I have a very good CPU, it's a Ryzen 5900. You know, I tried to train um, this same model in Google Cloud without the GPU and it took forever. This CPU is already uh, doing a lot, you know, for a, G for a CPU is actually not bad for what it's, it's trying. Yeah, compared to Google Cloud, at least this CPU is, is really good as you would expect all right and that's about it i hope you enjoyed this video i'm going to have an article all the steps that i've gone through in this video uh, also uh, written down so you can follow it easily i hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you again soon don't forget to click the like button by the way and happy coding bye bye